Oui, nous commençons. Mesdames, Messieurs, permettez-moi de vous souhaiter de nouveau la bienvenue dans notre belle ville de Phnom Penh pour cette 37e session de notre comité. Je suis certain que celle-ci sera placée sous le signe de succès dans la sérénité. Ladies and gentlemen, before examining item 2 of our agenda, I would like to give several information. First of all, as you know, the committee at its 35th session, decision 12B, paragraph 22, decided that World Heritage Committee meeting should be live streamed over the web. Therefore, I am pleased to announce that the debate of our session will be live streamed through the address which appear on the screen now and which is also available on the website of the 37 com. Yes. Secondly, please note that interpretation of our plenary session will be available in English, French, as well as in Russian, kindly provided by the Russian authorities. Please also note that thanks to the generosity of Qatar and Spain, interpretation will also be available in Arabic and in Spanish. I therefore invite the Russian and Arabic language speakers to choose in which working language, English or French, they would like to see their intervention being reflected in the summary record of the session. Your choice should be indicated orally at the time of your first intervention. It should also be transmitted in writing to the Secretariat before the end of our working session this morning. Dear colleague, it is now time for us to consider the participation of observers as presented in document two in accordance with rule eight of the rule of procedure. For your information, this is a bilingual document. I have to ask you if you agree to the presence of this observer throughout the session. <coughs> no objection. I see no objection. The participation of observer is agree. May I take it that the participation of observer is agree? Agreed. I declare agenda item two closed. Now we go to item three. We can now move to the review of the agenda and of the timetable of our session, item 3A and 3B. I would like to invite Mr. Kishorao, Director of the World Heritage Center and Secretary of the Convention, to present the agenda and the timetable for this session as contained in document 3A and 3B. Rep. Yes. This document should be read in conjunction with document INF.3A.3B.2. Dot 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 which is the provision, provisional list of document of our session. Mr. Rao, you have the floor. Thank you, Excellency. Uh, a very good morning to all of you, distinguished delegates, Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as the 
President announced, we are considering documents uh, 37.3A, which is the provisional agenda, and document 37.3B, Rev. These two documents uh, pertain to the provisional agenda for this uh, session, as well as the timetable. The provisional agenda is uh, the same as was adopted at the last session, at the 36th session, at the end of that session, you had adopted the provisional agenda and it remains unchanged. The timetable uh, is a new document because we had to adjust some of the timings of the sessions and you have that, uh, therefore, a revised document. This is uh, document 37, com slash 3B Rev. Mr. President, uh, the sessions uh, would uh, commence with the Bureau meeting every morning at 8.30 to 9, uh, and that is uh, a Bureau meeting for the members of the Bureau, which is the President, the Rapporteur, and the Vice Chairs. And it is also open to the observer state parties to the convention. So Bureau meeting will be held in the Bureau meeting room every morning from 8.30 to 9.00. And the morning session, uh, Mr. President, will be from 9 to 12.30, with a lunch break from 12.30 to 2.30, and the afternoon session from 2.30 to 7. During the lunch time, we have provided space and uh, the opportunity for working groups to meet, as well as uh, side events related to the work of the session to be organized. There is also space and uh, time available for side events to be organized at the end of the session at uh, 7 o'clock. Mr. President, uh, the main uh, business of the session is outlined in the timetable. We have provided for three days uh, of time for the State of Conservation Review, another three days or rather two and a half days for consideration of nominations and these dates have been kept discreet within the uh, schedule so that uh, states parties who are interested in particular state of conservation report or nominations could uh, plan their uh, uh, travel and uh, presence accordingly. Uh, we will have uh, the adoption of the decisions, the report of the decisions on Wednesday 26 June and uh, at the kind invitation of the president of the session, we will be relocating to Angkor on the 27th of June for the closing ceremony. Uh, we have a total number of 51 documents for this session. 36 of these documents are working documents and 15 information documents. And uh, all these documents have been dispatched to you starting from the 3rd of May. There was a second dispatch on 17th May and the last dispatch on 10th of June. Uh, if uh, there, 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 you have these documents on the USB key, if there is any uh, com committee member who is missing certain documents, please uh, contact the Secretariat. There will be a few documents, five documents, which will be generated during the session, which is essentially the list of participants the letter of factual errors on nominations, which will be distributed latest by tomorrow to you. Then based on the uh, inscriptions of sites and based on the inscriptions of sites on the danger list or removal of sites from the danger list, there will be a document relating to the update of the World Heritage List and the update of the World Heritage in Danger, which will also be generated during the session. You will establish the provisional agenda for the next session, which is the 38th session, and uh, finally the report of the decisions which you will adopt on the last day of the session. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Rao, for this uh, presentation. Do any member of the committee wish to make observation and suggestion regarding the provisional agenda and timetable, please. In no comment, you see, I therefore declare that the draft decision 37.3A and 37.3B adopted and agenda item 3 closed.
to go to let me go to to here. Thank you very much. At this very initial stage and before closing the examination of this item, please allow me to make some general announcement with the aim to guide our work and our discussion throughout the session. I would like to inform you all, dear colleagues, that due to the number of items on our agenda and the time constraint, I will apply Rule 22 of the Rule of Procedure, which limit the time allowed to each speaker. Time for intervention will be limited to three minutes for committee member and two minutes for observer. In this regard, please note that a sound system to God's intervention is in place. And I am, as a chairperson, also empowered to interrupt any speaker exceeding the recommended time limit. Concerning the intervention by observer from civil society and NGOs, I would like to request them, if they wish to take the floor on the same topic, to have consultation among them in order to prepare and deliver one single intervention. In order to save time as much as possible, I would appeal to you, dear colleague, not to repeat what other delegation have said. I would also request that official statement declaration be transmitted to the Secretariat in writing as soon as they have been deliver in order to integrate them in the summary record of the session. Furthermore, I would be very grateful if we could start on time every morning at 9 a.m. and every afternoon at 2 p.m., 2.30 p.m. sharp. Please note that, as indicated, in the timetable just adopted, the meeting of the Bureau will be held every morning as of tomorrow, Tuesday, from 8.30 to 9 a.m. I would also be very grateful if you could hold bilateral discussion outside the main conference room, but not during the debate. I would like, I also would like to ask you to switch off your mobile phone or to put them in the silent mode so as not to interrupt the debate. Finally, please note that no specific coffee break or a foreseen and tea will be available outside the conference room throughout all the day. Last but not least, I also wish to remind you all that all amendments to draft decision have to be submitted beforehand to the reporter, Mrs. Uh, Jasna Zeranovic, in writing using the blue form and when possible in an electronic version at the following mail address, WH reporter UNESCO org, which is a display on the screen so as to also facilitate and speed up the integration of the text in the relevant draft decision at hand for your consideration. This blue form is available in the room in both French and English, and the email address I just mentioned is written on it. Please ensure that your amendment are provided sufficiently in advance, considering that the Secretariat need time to have them translated. 
I would encourage you, whenever possible, to submit the amendment in both languages, English and French, to speed up the process, especially for last-minute amendment. Furthermore, the Secretariat will consult each committee member delegation to get one email address to which the electronic version or the blue form can be sent for easy use. I thank you in advance for your cooperation and understanding in this regard. Mesdames, Messieurs, nous passons maintenant à l'examen du pont 4 de notre ordre du jour. Comme vous le savez, c'est Madame Beatrice Hernandez Nahuez qui fut la rapporteure de la 36e session du Comité du patrimoine mondial qui s'est tenue du 24 juin au 6 juillet de, euh, euh, 2012 à Saint-Pétersbourg, en Fédération de Russie. Malheureusement, Mme Hernandez Nawes n'a pas pu être des notes aujourd'hui. Ce qu'elle regrette, toutefois, Mme Hernandez nous a transmis une présentation vidéo de son rapport. Nous aurons donc un peu l'impression qu'elle est parmi nous. Donc nous, nous avons la présentation de vidéo. Restart. The committee strongly condemned the acts of destruction of mausoleums in Timbuktu, decided to inscribe the sites of Mali in the least in danger, called the Director General of UNESCO to Mr. Chairman, distinguished members of the committee, first of all, allow me to present my sincere apologies for not being able to deliver personally this report as it would have been my wish. I thank my colleagues and members of the committee for having entrusted me with the great responsibility of being rapporteur during the 36th session of the committee in St. Petersburg. I also take the opportunity to pay tribute to the chairperson of the 36th session, Ambassador Eleonora Mitrofanova, for her relentless work and ability to conduct the discussions of the committee. I had the honor to assist her in putting together the different proposals presented for decision of the committee. Representatives of 21 state parties, members of the World Heritage Committee, were present in St. Petersburg, Algeria, Cambodia, Colombia, Estonia, Ethiopia, France, Germany, India, Iraq, Japan, Malaysia, Mali, Mexico, Qatar, Russian Federation, Senegal, Serbia, South Africa, Switzerland, Thailand, and United Arab Emirates. Furthermore, 97 states parties to the World Heritage Convention, which are not members of the committee, were represented as observers. This presence shows the great importance given to the 1972 Convention one of the most universally ratified legal instruments which now accounts with 190 states parties. The session in St. Petersburg was special in many ways. For the first time, as per the decision adopted by the General Assembly, the proceedings of the World Heritage Committee were made available through live streaming on the internet, enabling the stakeholders of the convention to follow the debates and making the process more transparent. Also, two new fora were holding during the 36th session, the youth model of the UNESCO World Heritage Committee in Kazan, capital of the Republic of Tatarstan, and the International Forum NGOs in support of the World Heritage Properties. The 36th session witnessed numerous threats to World Heritage sites, 
Among others, the committee was informed of the earthquake in northern Italy that struck the city of Ferrara. The dangers of World Heritage sites in Syria due to the increasing violence in the country and the damage caused by extremist groups to the size of Timbuktu and the tomb of Askia in Mali. The committee strongly condemned the acts of destruction of mausoleums in Timbuktu, decided to inscribe the sites of Mali in the list on danger, called the Director General of UNESCO to create a special fund to help Mali in the conservation and restoration of its cultural heritage, and launched an appeal to the international community for the protection of this heritage. These tragic events gave a wider dimension of the current and future challenges facing the 1972 Convention, particularly in terms of strengthening protection, conservation, and rehabilitation of the heritage of humanity. In that sense, the committee was informed that the open-ended working group established by the 18th General Assembly on the implementation of the recommendation of the evaluation of the global strategy put particular accent on conservation, which lies at the heart of the Convention. As such, the group also stressed the need to define a global conservation strategy to review the state of conservation processes and to give priority to assistance for conservation and management. The 36th session didn't turn away from the tendency of dealing with a very heavy agenda. To optimize its work and following previous practice, the committee established two subsidiary bodies. The first one, devoted to the operational guidelines, called on the World Heritage Center and the advisory bodies to continue the reflection on clarifying the links between the different documents that have been elaborated for the implementation of the convention. On the other hand, the working group of the budget look at the severe budgetary situation due to the financial shortfall since 2011 and raise concerns on the sustainability of the World Heritage Fund. The group called upon the committee to seriously reflect on this situation, especially when it takes decisions mandating new tasks to the World Heritage Center or to the advisory bodies. As a result of the financial situation, in St. Petersburg, the committee approved a revised budget for the biennium 2012-2013, which was reduced by $1.4 million and urged states parties to consider allocating voluntary contributions to the World Heritage Fund. As to the state of the World Heritage List, the committee inscribed 26 properties, five natural, one mixed, and 20 cultural, of which four were from underrepresented countries, Chad, Congo, Palau, and Palestine. With these inscriptions, the list now totals 962 properties located in 157 states' parties. One extension was added onto a property already inscribed in the list, Tasmanian Wilderness in Australia, and five properties were added to the World Heritage List in danger. Timbuktu, Anthem of Askia in Mali, Birthplace of Jesus, Church of the Nativity at the Pilgrimage Route in Bethlehem, Palestine, fortifications on the Caribbean side of Panama, Portobello, San Lorenzo in Panama, and Liverpool Maritime Mercantile City, United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. The committee also examined 141 state of conservation reports, including 35 properties on the list of World Heritage in Danger. In total, the committee adopted 241 decisions. All this work wouldn't have been possible without the professional assistance of the Secretariat, who produced more than 50 documents for the 36th session, including the decisions report, a report that was issued and approved in a time record. A special mention for this accomplishment needs also to be made to the advisory bodies, members of the committee, member states, observers, NGOs, and all those who contributed to the success of the 36th session. I will finish my remarks by congratulating my successor, Mrs. Jasna Snovik of Serbia, who accepted to take the role of rapporteur for the 37th session. I wish you all the best in what I'm sure will be a very constructive and fruitful session. Thank you for your attention. Ms. 
Mr. Chairman, distinguished members. <laughs> I repeat. No. Chers collègues, avez-vous des commentaires ou des questions sur le rapport de la dernière session Donc je n'en vois pas. Je propose donc que le comité prenne note de ce rapport du rapporteur. S'il n'y a pas d'opposition, il en a ainsi décidé. Je déclare le point 4 de l'ordre du jour clos. Je donne la parole au secrétariat qui va... Ah non, je m'excuse. Nous passons... Oui, le point 4 a déjà fait. Oui. Nous passons au, euh, au item numéro 12. La constitution du groupe de travail. Chers collègues, notre prochain point est lié à la révision des orientations. Comme vous vous en souviendrez, en conformité avec la décision 35.13.8, le comité a décidé de créer un groupe de travail ouvert sur les orientations à la 36e session du comité du patrimoine mondial en 2012. Comme vous le savez aussi, un tel groupe de travail sur les orientations avait déjà été établi par le comité à la 34e session. Ce groupe de travail pourrait être établi en tant qu'organe consultatif conformément à l'article 20 du règlement antérieur, ouvert à la participation de tous les États partis qui les souhaitent, y compris les États en membre, non membres du comité. Êtes-vous d'accord pour la constitution de ce groupe Je vous rappelle que chaque organe consultatif désigne son président. Voilà parce que nous avons deux groupes. Donc je, vous propose, je propose que chaque groupe se consulte et désigne son président. Oui, c'est... La Malaisie. Yeah. Thank you very much, oui. Mr. President. Firstly, allow me to say that Malaysia would like to thank the Kingdom of Cambodia for their very warm and generous hospitality in organizing this meeting. Operational Guidelines is an important document that guides our work and has to be seriously examined to update it. We would like to propose India as chair of the operational guidelines. Thank you. Okay, good morning, Mr. Chairman. First of all, I would join the previous speaker in thanking the Cambodian government for hospitality and organization of this uh, conference. Um, we would like to propose as chairman of the working group Switzerland. Thank you. South Africa. South Africa. Thank you, Chairman. I would also like to thank Cambodia for the excellent arrangements for this conference, and I would like to support India 
as the chairperson for the working group on operation guidelines. Thank you. Qatar is available for the floor. شكرا سيد الرئيس نحن أيضا نؤيد أن ترأس الهند هذه المجموعة شكرا Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je voudrais tout d'abord remercier le Cambodge pour son hospitalité et l'organisation de, de cette rencontre. Euh, L'Algérie soutient la proposition de, de la présidence accordée à l'Inde, si elle est accordée. Merci. L'Estonie. Thank you. Estonia would like to support the uh, candidature of Switzerland for this position for the sake of um, uh, continuity because uh, Switzerland already was leading this group and many, many things that have been already discussed uh, come up again, so it's good to have such an institutional memory. But uh, I have also a question, as I understood from the chairperson, the consultative body itself will elect a chairperson. So that means not only the committee members, but everyone who is interested in participating in this group. And my question is, do we really need to discuss this question now? Thank you. I think it is a, a very good point. Yeah? Uh, it seems uh, difficult to take the decision now. That's why I think maybe uh, tomorrow we can organize the discussion hmm. inside the group. Yes. So if uh, we can agree to that, no objection. Yes, so we can go forward. So, merci d'avoir la décision de conseiller ce groupe de travail sur la révision des annotations. Cette décision sera bien évidemment reflétée dans la décision finale concernant le pont 12 de l'ordre du jour. J'invite maintenant M. Rao à nous donner les informations logistiques quant aux réunions de ce groupe de travail qui vient d'être établi. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, just to recall, uh, this working group will be constituted under Rule 20 of the Rules of Procedure. It will be a consultative body open to committee members as well as uh, states parties not members of the committee. And as the President uh, just announced, the consultative group can elect its own chairperson. Uh, when, I uh, when I presented the timetable, I mentioned that the working groups will be meeting at lunchtime between 12.30 and 2.30, and we have provided for one hour for each of the working groups to meet. So this working group uh, of the operational guidelines will, will meet from 12.30 to 1.30 in room Champa, which is on the third floor. Please uh, make a note of that. It's room Champa on the third floor from 12.30 to 1.30, starting tomorrow. Thank you very much, Mr. President. So we can go forward. Nous passons à item 15. Le rapport sur l'exécution du budget 2012-2013 et préparation du budget 2014-2015, constitution d'un organe consultatif. Chers collègues, notre prochain point est lié aux questions budgétaires. Comme vous vous en souviendrez, le comité a établi par sa décision 35 comme 12b et 12b, paragraphe 13, un organe consultatif permanent sur l'examen du budget 
BNR du comité. En conformité avec l'article 20 du règlement antérieur, ouvert la participation de tous les États partis qui les souhaitent, y compris les États non membres du comité. Donc, je, je me demande si, si nos collègues ont des observations. Je n'en vois pas, il en est donc ainsi décidé. Je vous rappelle que les organes consultatifs désignent leur président. Donc nous adoptons les mêmes, les mêmes euh, principes oui, pour les deux groupes. J'invite euh, M. Rao de faire un peu de commentaires sur ça, comment on va organiser le, la réunion. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this uh, working group on the budget uh, to discuss item 15 of the agenda will also be a consultative uh, body constituted under Rule 20 of the Rules of Procedure and uh, it will elect, elect its own chairperson. Uh, the group will meet from 1.30 to 2.30 each day starting tomorrow in room Champai. The previous room was Champa and this is room Champai. Uh, this is also on the third floor uh, from 1.30 to 2.30 starting tomorrow. Thank you, Mr. President. Chers collègues, vu comme euh, j'ai le devoir d'accompagner nos VVIP pour une visite de courtoisie à Sa Majesté, donc je me permets d'inviter M. le vice-président Colombie de me remplacer, s'il vous plaît, le représentant de Colombie, s'il vous plaît. Buenos días en español, por supuesto. Eh, entonces, los invito, por supuesto, a que continuemos con el orden del día. Eh, nous passons maintenant à l'examen du point suivant, qui concerne le rapport du Centre de Patrimoine Mondial sur les activités sur la mise en œuvre des décisions du Comité de Patrimoine Mondial, qui est contenu dans les documents WHWHC 1337,5A. Pour présenter ces points, je donne la parole au directeur du Centre de Patrimoine Mondial, M. Rao. Et M. Rao, vous avez la parole. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairperson. The report of the Secretariat uh, on the activities implemented by it uh, from the end of the last session to this session is contained in document 37.5A. Uh, it is a non-exhaustive list of activities that, has been, uh, that have been implemented. You have already heard the results of the last session reported by the reporter of the last session, so I will not go into them. Just highlight a few of the major activities that were implemented. Uh, we had uh, released the report of uh, 
the last session, the 36th session, within one month, which is the statutory deadline for the report to be released. And this was largely thanks to the efficiency of the reporter of the last session. We also organized uh, an information uh, orientation session and an information session for committee members on the 31st of uh, January at headquarters in Paris. A meeting of the open-ended working group uh, to follow up on the recommendation of the UNESCO external auditor on the evaluation of the partnership initiative was organized on the 31st of January, again at headquarters in Paris. And at the request of the committee members, we organized an orientation session on the rules and procedure on the 1st of uh, February uh, at uh, Paris. An information session for the committee members after the dispatch of documents for this session was organized on 6th uh, of May when the president of the committee was also present. You all are well aware of the inscription of properties that took place uh, at the last session, so I will not go into them. Uh, just to highlight that uh, many more uh, states parties have now submitted tentative lists, and the total number of uh, tentative lists uh, are, uh, stand at 172 states parties with uh, tentative lists uh, uh, inscribed uh, against their countries. For the current session, of course, we have uh, originally 36 nominations for considerations, but uh, so far we have had uh, six nominations that have been withdrawn, and we have therefore 30 nominations for discussion. We have continued our collaborations with uh, various international uh, conventions and organizations uh, throughout the year. Uh, we have also collaborated with the biodiversity-related conventions through the Forum of the Biodiversity Liaison Group. Uh, the center was represented at the last conference of parties, which was organized uh, in Hyderabad in October last year. We have collaborated on the intergovernmental platform on biodiversity and ecosystem services through the science sector of UNESCO, and a very significant cooperation with the CITES uh, Secretariat on monitoring the killing of uh, elephants in Africa, where a large number of World Heritage Sites are impacted by heavy poaching. And uh, there is also a statement by the Secretary General of CITES, uh, which will be read out later on by one of my colleagues. We have uh, also collaborated with the Council of Europe on uh, the European Diploma Sites uh, and those which are also designated as World Heritage Sites. And a similar collaboration has continued with the Ramsar Convention because a large number of uh, Ramsar Sites and World Heritage designations uh, are overlapping. Within UNESCO, we have uh, established uh, another forum uh, known as the Culture Conventions Liaison Group. And uh, this, uh, the intention of this group is uh, primarily to enhance coordination and uh, synergies between the various culture conventions that exist uh, within uh, UNESCO, and uh, particularly with the Convention on Intangible Heritage Convention, the Convention on uh, Illicit Traffic of Cultural Property, and the Hague Convention. Uh, we have uh, established, in order to enhance uh, efficiencies, a common logistics unit so that the statutory meetings of all these uh, governing bodies could be organized uh, through one uh, unit. We have established various uh, thematic working groups to look at common processes and common uh, uh, procedures relating to periodic reporting, uh, the granting of international assistance. Capacity building programs are another uh, area where we feel that we could uh, join efforts, and we have requested uh, ICROM if it could help in identifying the best modality for uh, delivering that kind of joint uh, capacity building uh, effort. You would recall uh, that uh, the executive bo board at the last session uh, was seriously concerned about the heavy workload entailed by the meetings of the governing bodies and, the, uh, and in particular on account of the resource constraints, both financial and staffing uh, constraints that uh, have existed. And some of the uh, suggestions and options that were presented for consideration relating to the reduction of the periodicity of uh, the statutory meetings, reduction of the items on the agenda, 
and also considering whether the uh, sessions could be so organized as to address different aspects of the agenda in alternative years. In terms of the 1972 con convention, one of the suggestions made was to consider uh, nominations every alternate year rather than every year, and in the intervening year to consider state of conservation reports. These were just some of the options that were uh, discussed, but obviously it is for the committee to consider, discuss, and debate how best it could enhance efficiencies considering the constraints that uh, fall on the, on the UNESCO uh, budget and program. Uh, we have uh, continued to see how the uh, activities of the various conventions could be uh, synergized. You would recall that there was uh, at Chengdu in China uh, this week a meeting of the 10th anniversary uh, of the convention and a recommendation has been adopted called the Chengdu recommendation which also draws attention to the enhanced collaboration between the 72 convention and the 2003 convention. We also collaborate very actively with the UNESCO Biosphere Reserves program uh, considering that over 75 uh, sites have op overlapping designations as natural world heritage sites and biosphere reserves. Uh, and uh, we are looking how the monitoring mechanisms could uh, uh, benefit both these uh, uh, conventions and programs. Uh, jointly with the science sector, we have also initiated a new uh, program called uh, Renewable Energy Futures for UNESCO sites. And the intention is to promote the use of renewable energy uh, technologies at World Heritage Sites and Biosphere Reserves in order to highlight the need for more energy and efficient uh, technologies being used at these sites and promoting the uh, use of renewable energy technologies. Uh, the World Heritage Center also moderated an e-discussion on the One UN uh, web platform in preparation for the U UN uh, ECOSOC uh, meeting uh, next month in order to, a to be able to solicit views from a wide range of uh, players uh, on the contribution of culture, both uh, culture and natural heritage uh, to sustainable development. And as you know, UNESCO has launched a, a, a huge uh, advocacy effort in uh, trying to position culture uh, squarely in the post-2015 development agenda. And uh, Mr. President, if you allow later on uh, during the uh, discussion, the Assistant Director General for Culture to speak more to it. Uh, on, on this particular point. Uh, last month, China hosted at Hangzhou the uh, International Conference on Culture, a key to development, and the World Heritage Center also played an active role uh, in that particular conference, including uh, on the outcome document, uh, which uh, was uh, adopted at that uh, conference. We also worked with UNDP on including a chapter on uh, cultural and natural heritage, uh, uh, primarily on disaster risk preparedness in the post-disaster needs assessment uh, manual. And this uh, manual has been published with the support of the World Bank and the European Union. Uh, we also organized a special session on heritage and resilience at the 2013 UN uh, Global Platform on Disaster Risk Reduction, which was held in Geneva in May this year, together with uh, our advisory bodies, uh, ECOMOS uh, and ICROM. A number of international expert meetings, uh, some of them mandated also by the World Heritage Committee, uh, were uh, organized, an international workshop uh, on World Heritage Convention and Indigenous Peoples was uh, hosted by Denmark in September last year. Uh, in order to ensure the uh, procedures of the convention uh, are consistent with the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. Uh, we had an international conference on urban architecture in December in Paris. Uh, the government of India hosted an international expert meeting on visual impact uh, of uh, development projects on uh, world, uh, world heritage sites. Uh, and there will be a report presented on that uh, aspect uh, later on in the agenda. 
There were sev several other uh, activities. I will not go into them, Mr. President, in great detail, just to highlight that uh, a, a large number of other activities also had to be uh, coordinated by the center, uh, which includes a very significant and substantial response to the crisis in Mali, as you have just heard from the reporter. Uh, we organized a solidarity day for Mali uh, at uh, UNESCO headquarters on the 18th of February. Uh, an action plan was prepared with all the relevant uh, national and international partners uh, on mobilizing support, financial and technical support for rehabilitating the cultural, destroyed cultural heritage in Mali. A uh, couple of missions have been undertaken, as the Director General mentioned yesterday at the opening ceremony. We have just come back from a mission to Mali uh, with a detailed uh, plan of action on rehabilitating and reconstructing. Uh, for the first time, the UN Secretary, the Security Council has adopted a resolution on Mali which contains a specific uh, provision for the peacekeeping operations to work on cultural heritage together with the uh, with UNESCO, uh, both for rehabilitating and protecting cultural heritage, as well as for building uh, capacity uh, of the peacekeeping uh, forces on uh, protecting and dealing with cultural heritage. Uh, part two of this document, uh, Mr. President, uh, contains a full range of activities covering all the five strategic objectives of the convention, but the main focus is on capacity building and uh, conservation activities. Uh, there are activities also reported in other documents which you will be considering during the session in the documents relating to the follow-up to, uh, to the periodic reporting exercise, uh, to the reports of the advisory bodies, reports from the Category 2 centers on World Heritage. So there are uh, a large number of activities that have been implemented throughout the year which are reported in various documents. And uh, not to forget, the very large number of activities that were hosted by many countries, over 40 countries, uh, in relation to the celebration of the 40th anniversary of the convention throughout last year, concluding with the magnificent uh, closing ceremony that was hosted by uh, uh, Japan at Kyoto in November last year. Mr. President, uh, this document also contains uh, three annexes. Uh, the first annex contains a follow-up of the decisions that were adopted at the 36th session. It also includes uh, a list of uh, meetings that have been organized or are proposed to be organized in the coming year, and the authorization that have been uh, granted for the use of the World Heritage Emblem. In conclusion, what I would like to say, uh, Mr. President, uh, is that these uh, large number of activities that we implement would not have been possible, but for the very generous support uh, that we have received, uh, financial uh, as well as uh, support in terms of hosting uh, many of these uh, meeting and in-kind support from uh, states parties to the convention. But uh, as I mentioned, uh, we need to look at uh, uh, the efficiencies uh, uh, of the activities and uh, the decisions that uh, the committee adopts in terms of requesting for more activities to be implemented, uh, considering the resource constraints, uh, both budgetary constraints as well as constraints in, in, in numbers of uh, staff uh, that are now uh, uh, available at the World Heritage Center. Uh, there is a freeze on recruitment, so many of the posts uh, continue to be vacant. and. Uh, kindly keep this in mind as you move forward with the adopting decisions uh, in the rest of the session. Thank you, Mr. President. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur Rao, pour cet uh, très important uh, rapport, très complet, bien sûr. Donc, uh, je vous invite, chers collègues, maintenant, uh, à regarder le projet de décision 37,5A, figurant au point 3 du document qui vient de nous être présenté. Et je vous invite à vous présenter des commentaires si vous les savez, s'il vous plaît. Je ne vois pas de commentaires. 
des questions. Donc, euh, si on est d'accord avec le document ainsi que le projet de décision, euh, je pense qu'on peut passer à l'adoption de ce euh, document. Si on est tous d'accord, euh, on adopte la décision WHC 1337 comme 5A. Donc, euh, elle est adoptée. Donc, maintenant, nous passons au point 5B, euh, qui, est, qui est le rapport des organisations consultatives. Euh, ces rapports sont contenus dans les documents WHC 1337, comme 5B. Et j'ai envie, et donc maintenant, le représentant de l'UICN à prendre la parole sur ce sujet et suivi du représentant de l'ICOMOS et enfant de celui de l'ICROM. Donc, euh, le représentant de l'UICN, vous avez la parole. Start. Thank you, Chair. This is the first intervention IUCN is making at the World Heritage Committee. As the Regional Director for IUCN in Asia, I would like to thank Tam Cambodia for your warm welcome an excellent organization and congratulate you for bringing the committee to our region. IUCN's report under this item is before the World Heritage Committee. Mr. Badman, who is to my left and the head of our delegation, will be pleased to take any questions the committee may have on the report. The report primarily covers our work as an advisory body, a role we have undertaken since the inception of the convention in 1972. I would like to draw specific attention to paragraph 40, which highlights the increased priority that IUCN is according to World Heritage. IUCN is also pleased to note that a past chairperson of the World Heritage Committee, Mr. Zhang Zhisheng, has been ed elected to be the president of IUCN. IUCN increasingly sees its central contribution to this convention to be that of ensuring that it remains credible and relevant to the new challenges facing conservation in the 21st century. Credibility, in our view, will rely on upholding the standards of the Convention as a beacon of excellence in how to conserve outstanding natural and cultural places. That is why we work so diligently in support of the Committee's aspirations to retain the highest standards of quality within World Heritage Sites. If these sites do not stand for the best, then nowhere does. But relevance will not be won simply by high standards of protection and maintaining rigor in listing. Relevance of world heritage will only be secured if we demonstrate how the protection and conservation of world heritage sites deliver solutions to the complex development needs of modern society while retaining our precious shared heritage. That is why at IUCN we are strongly committed to the supporting upstream processes for nominations and why we are undertaking new work to deliver more proactive monitoring of sites. Together with the Ministry of Environment Japan, we are now planning for the Asia Parks Congress, which will be held in Sendai in November this year. Planning is also well advanced for the World Parks Congress to be held in Australia in November 2014 on the theme of inspiring solutions. World Heritage Site should be the centerpiece that leads to those inspiring solutions. As an IUCN Regional Director, I would like to close by affirming the importance of the effort to ensure that benefits of World Heritage reach all regions of the globe. Our regional offices have a key role to play to facilitate advice and provide support. In Asia, for example, our 11 country offices work with IUCN member organizations and commissions to implement a wide range of World Heritage related projects, such as support to tentative lists, on-ground management, and the promotion of appropriate development in the wider land and seascapes. IUCN Asia is also actively involved in helping to develop the IUCN Green List of Protected Areas, a powerful new tool to promote management excellence, including World Heritage Sites. We will be showcasing many aspects of our work during a special event on IUCN's work in Asia to be held at 1 o'clock in the afternoon on Tuesday the 18th in the Advisory Bodies Pavilion in Room 4 on the fourth floor, and we hope you can join us there to learn more about IUCN's regional work to make World Heritage the success we all strive for. Thank you.
Merci beaucoup, madame. Euh, donc, euh, bah, je vous invite, chers collègues, à vous présenter de, vos commentaires euh, sur le rapport de la représentante de l'UICN, si vous le savez, s'il vous plaît. Donc, euh, je ne vois pas. Et je passe la parole maintenant au représentant de l'ICOMOS. Est-ce que vous avez la parole Thank you, Mr. Chair. ECOMOS wants to express our appreciation to the government of Cambodia for, the or for hosting and organizing the 37th meeting of the World Heritage Committee and for the warm hospitality with which we have been received. As we have done since the genesis of the convention, ECOMOS has once more endeavored to use the totality of our resources to provide the committee with the best and most professional advice regarding new nominations to be considered by the committee, as well as all other issues concerning the conservation and protection of heritage properties in the World Heritage List. A full description of our work for this year can be found in the report that you have received as part of the documents. I want to take this opportunity also to thank the staff and advisors of ECOMOS and the hundreds of members of ECOMOS throughout the world who contributed this year to our World Heritage obligations. This is a, a, a composite effort on our part, not that of any of the advisors specifically or any individual. We remind the committee, as we do every year, that ECOMOS uses professional expertise from all the pertinent disciplines and from cultural regions that are relevant to each property. We're happy to provide this assistance, and ECOMOS remains committed to the aims of the convention, even though it signifies a considerable drain on our financial resources. Over this past year, we have also had the privilege to participate in a number of key activities in various parts of the world that were focused on finding ways for the advisory bodies to work more closely with states parties in implementing the convention in their own countries and within their regions. ECOMOS sees this trend as an important first step in clearing the air of the many misunderstandings and disagreements that have played the convention over the past three years, and about which our Director General, Mrs. Bokova, has expressed her serious concern. Examples of this cooperation include consultations with state parties regarding pilot projects within the upstream process adopted by the World Heritage Committee that have been underway in order to ensure that potential nominations are more robust. ECOMOS has also had early consultations with some states parties regarding development projects at World Heritage Properties to ensure that these would not impact the outstanding universal value. With the support of Switzerland, whom we thank, we have been working to strengthen our professional expert networks, and with that of Bahrain, whom we also thank, ECOMOS is resuming its program of thematic studies. Ironically, as the demands for more work on the part of the advisory bodies continues to increase, the funds necessary to sustain adequate responses continue to dwindle. And this is why we're so appreciative of the generosity of states parties like Switzerland and Bahrain, as well as Japan, whom we thank for their ongoing exploration on the deeper meanings of the NARA declaration, or the NARA document, I'm sorry. I will simply finish by reiterating ECOMOS' commitment to work in open cooperation with states parties, as I expressed in the Looking Forward meeting in Paris last year. ECOMOS and IUCN have, uh, have met and have been meeting, and we believe that new mechanisms are needed for better, to better operationalize upstream approaches and build capacity. We're interested to explore these possibilities further during this session so that we may face together the many challenges of inscribing and protecting properties in the World Heritage List. I know, I very well know, that over the next few days, the committee will not always agree with our advice. This is an expected and normal aspect of the professional process that we welcome as long as it is done with mutual respect and professionalism. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, monsieur. Et donc, euh, je passe maintenant aux membres du comité pour les offrir la parole, si vous avez des commentaires sur le rapport du représentant de l'ICOMOS, s'il vous plaît. Si vous avez des commentaires. Oui, Mali, vous avez la parole. 
Merci, Monsieur le Président. Monsieur le Président, je remercie beaucoup les organes consultatifs pour euh, ces brillantes présentations. Et dans son propos, Monsieur le Représentant de l'Ecomos disait qu'ils avaient approché les États partis. Est-ce qu'on peut avoir une idée précise Est-ce qu'il s'agit des États partis qui ont des nominations en cours ou bien des États partis membres du comité Est-ce qu'on peut avoir des précisions par rapport à ça aux États partis qui ont été abordés Merci. I'm sorry, if you could repeat the question, I couldn't quite okay, I get it. I, I, I can say it in English if you want. Okay. You said that... Uh, absolument. Vous pouvez parler en français, s'il vous plaît. You've been, you've, been, you've, been, you've been working with some state parties. Yes. Okay. And I would like to know if those state parties are the ones who are members of the World Heritage Committee or other state parties who are having uh, goods to be nominated. Thank you. Uh, the state parties that we're working with uh, are part of the, uh, oh. of, of the ones that, that were selected as part of a broad process of analysis. Uh, I would have to consult with, uh, with our advisors and our staff as to exactly which those state par uh, parties are where we have been working upstream. Uh, could I ask uh, our staff over at our desk to please identify what those, uh, what those state parties are? Thank you to the representative of ICOMOS. And uh, I would just like to mention that uh, I prefer first to listen to the comments of the committee members. And, and after that, I will give the floor again to okay. ICOMOS representative. So please, uh, if there are some other member states, I see Mexico, please, you have the floor. Eh, muchas gracias, señor presidente. Eh, es nuestra primera intervención y queremos agradecer también al gobierno de Camboya su generosidad para recibirnos en esta sesión del comité acá. Eh, nosotros brevemente queremos eh, comentar eh, que queremos agradecer el trabajo y la colaboración que hemos estado emprendiendo con ICOMOS, eh, principalmente en temas como el estado de conservación de los sitios inscritos en la lista y en la declaración, sobre todo, es todo este año eh, que ha transcurrido en las declaraciones retrospectivas de valor universal excepcional. Eh, queremos reiterar al presidente de ICOMOS la invitación para contar con una mayor participación por parte de los expertos del organismo y de los otros organismos también en las reuniones internacionales que nuestro país y en general, y en general la, la región de América Latina y el Caribe llevan a cabo anualmente. Eh, queremos reconocer eh, su participación de los 13 organismos asesores en las discusiones de los Estados partes, eh, en la reunión que sostuvimos en octubre en París, convocada por la directora general de la UNESCO, en la que se prosiguió, en palabras de ustedes, con un diálogo continuo y fructífero. Y finalmente, eh, queremos pedir nuevamente que los organismos asesores tengan una mayor presencia en la región América Latina y el Caribe, contando para ello de manera inmediata con los expertos que ya han sido formados en diversas reuniones, como la patrocinada, y siempre lo repetimos y agradecemos, la patrocinada en 2010 por UICN y el gobierno de Suiza en San José, Costa Rica, y la de ICROM de 2011 en Zacatecas, México. Gracias. Muchas gracias, el representante de México. Do we have another comments on this? report. If not, I might invite the representative of the ICROM to present his report. Please, sir, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, as this is the first time that ECROM is taking the floor, I would like to express uh, my delegation's warmest thanks to the government of Cambodia for the warm welcome and hospitality that we have received for our entire delegation. Uh, ECROM has a long-standing collaboration with the Kingdom of Cambodia, and we look forward to continuing and strengthening that collaboration in the future. Mr. Chairman, ECROM is pleased to have the opportunity to say a few words about our own activities in the past year in favor of the World Heritage Convention. As an advisory body to the World Heritage Committee, ECROM is involved in many convention activities. 
Uh, as you will see in document 5B, ECRUM participates in periodic reporting and reactive monitoring process, the evaluation of international assistance, and of course the continued scientific and technical development of the convention. I'm particularly pleased to reiterate ECRUM's commitment to its role as a focal point for capacity building activities within the, con uh, the convention. Uh, with the approval of the World Heritage Capacity Building Strategy by the committee, in 2011, work has begun on the development and implementation of programs at the international and regional levels. You will hear a report on the implementation of this under item six in our agenda today. But I would like to take this opportunity to single out the government of Switzerland for its support of capacity building efforts to date. And I would like to ask other interested states parties to consider contributing to capacity building efforts being undertaken both at the regional level and also at the international level. I would also call attention of the committee to, uh, to a program within ECROM's own program budget called Improving Conservation and Management Practices Through the World Heritage Convention. Uh, this is the uh, first time uh, that the General Assembly of ECROM has approved a specific program for capacity building for World Heritage within our regular program and budget. But also other ECROM programs are of relevance to better implementation of the World Heritage Convention. For example, our programs on disaster and risk management is of high relevance to conservation of World Heritage properties around the world, which have suffered from natural and man-made disasters. As an example, ECROM hosted the head of the cultural mission of Timbuktu at our last course in September on uh, first aid to cultural heritage in times of conflict. And we partnered with ECOMOS on a short e-learning course for Syrian cultural heritage professionals on uh, the topic of protection of Syria's cultural heritage in times of armed, co armed conflict. Uh, that e-learning activity took place in January of this past year. ECROM's programs on science and conservation, as well as living heritage, are also could be seen as being of, uh, of a strong relevance or importance for World Heritage properties. Like IUCN and ECOMOS, ECROM is committed to ensuring the highest level of advice to the World Heritage Committee to ensure, that, um, uh, to ensure the credibility of the, of the World Heritage Convention over time. Uh, Mr. Chairman, to conclude, ECROM looks forward to continuing its collaboration with the other advisory bodies, with the World Heritage Center, with states parties, with category two centers in all regions of the world and other institutions on increasing the capacity at all levels for the better management of World Heritage properties. Thank you very much uh, for giving me this time, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, sir, and thank you for your report. Now I might invite again the members of the committee to present its comments on this item, please. I see now. Senegal, please, you have the floor, sir. Merci, uh, Monsieur le Président. C'est la première fois que le Sénégal prend la parole. Nous en profitons pour uh, remercier le Cambodge pour uh, cette organisation exceptionnelle et toutes les facilités mises à notre disposition. Nous remercions aussi le Centre du patrimoine mondial pour uh, la qualité des documents ainsi que bien sûr les organisations consultatives. Euh, le Sénégal voudrait euh, attirer l'attention des organisations consultatives et de tous les membres du comité sur euh, un élément extrêmement important qui va suivre le comité et la convention. Nous parlons régulièrement des valeurs universelles euh, exceptionnelles, c'est la base, c'est le cœur de la convention. Et depuis quelques années, nous avons travaillé sur les valeurs universelles au plan rétrospectif. C'est aussi important de savoir euh, comment euh, ces valeurs-là ont évolué. Euh, Jusque-là, nous regardons dans le rétroviseur. Le Sénégal pense qu'il est maintenant temps que nous puissions regarder devant, notamment dans la préparation des dossiers de nomination et dans la constitution des plans de gestion. L'année dernière, nous avons eu la possibilité et la chance d'inscrire un paysage minier français, industriel. Beaucoup de pays sont aujourd'hui des pays en développement qui vont être aménagés. Et ces aménagements entreront nécessairement en conflit dans de nombreux cas 
avec des sites protégés, avec des sites du patrimoine mondial. Il est temps, nous semble-t-il, de commencer à réfléchir sur les notions de valeur universelle prospective afin de ne pas avoir des clashs à force de regarder seulement dans le rétroviseur. Merci. Merci beaucoup, monsieur le représentant du Sénégal. Euh, y a-t-il des autres commentaires Le Mali, s'il vous plaît. Merci, monsieur le Président. Monsieur le Président, je, je voudrais réitérer mes remerciements au gouvernement cambodgien pour l'organisation de cette séance, cette session. Mais je voudrais aussi remercier le représentant de Micron pour cette brillante présentation. Au passage, j'aimerais insister sur deux points techniques fondamentaux. Il s'agit des sessions d'orientation qui sont utiles pour le comité, nous l'avons toujours dit, et qui étaient organisées par l'ICROM. On souhaite que ces sessions continuent. Ça fait par sa rentre dans le cadre du renforcement des capacités des membres du comité. Le, le deuxième élément important, ce sont les manuels, la publication des manuels de référence. Monsieur le Président, il y a des domaines pour lesquels les compétences, les spécialités sont vraiment limitées. Je dirais que c'est des domaines neufs, des domaines nouveaux, pour lesquels nous n'avons pas une, une documentation assez précise. Et en la matière, l'ICRO a commencé à publier des manuels de référence. Je songe par exemple à la gestion des risques. Je songe par exemple à la gestion du patrimoine en période de conflit. Ce sont là vraiment des manuels qui, en les produisant, peuvent beaucoup aider les gestionnaires de sites eux-mêmes. Je vous remercie. Merci beaucoup, monsieur le représentant du Mali. Euh, je vois le Sémirat arabe uni. Merci, vous avez la parole. البدء نود أن وفد دولة الإمارات يتقدم بالشكر إلى الحكومة الكمبودية والجهات المختصة على كرم الضيافة وعلى حسن التنظيم ونحن سعداء أن نكون معهم هنا في هذا البلد الغني بثقافته وتراثه الحضاري الشكر موصول لمركز التراث العالمي على تقريره الوافي وعلى جودة الوثائق وعلى المساهمة في تنظيم هذا اللقاء وبما أننا بصدد مناقشة تقارير الهيئات الاستشارية أيضا أنتهز هذه الفرصة لأن نعبر عن تقدير دولة الإمارات العربية المتحدة لجهود هذه الهيئات وهذا الجهد يهمنا كثيرا ولقد عبرنا عن هذا الموقف في اجتماع الدورة السابقة عن أهمية تطوير علاقة التعاون بين الدول الأعضاء والهيئات الاستشارية وأن تنتقل هذه العلاقة من علاقة التعاون ذي الطابع الامتحاني إلى الشراكة يعني المسألة سادها بعض الالتباس في الماضي بأن الهيئة الاستشارية مهمتها مقتصرة على قبول إدراج أو عدم الإدراج أو إلى حد معين نحن نحن ندرك أن من الدورة الماضية إلى هذه الدورة ربما ترى بعض التحسن في هذه العلاقة وأصبحت علاقة عمل مشترك نأمل أن تتطور هذه المسألة في المستقبل أريد أن أشيد بما أشار إليه وفد السنغال لأن هذا الأمر يهمنا في الحفاظ على تراثنا الثقافي وشكرا Merci beaucoup, monsieur le représentant de Samir Azarabini. Euh, y a-t-il des autres commentaires sur ce point Je ne vois pas. Donc, chers collègues, nous devons maintenant adopter ou passer à l'adoption du projet de décision 37 5 b 
qui continue au point 4 du document que vous avez devant vous. Et avez vous des commentaires complémentaires ou additionnels avant que nous passions à l'adoption de ce document Donc, je ne vois pas. Et donc, on est à Algérie. Vous avez la parole, monsieur. Merci, monsieur le président. Je voudrais tout d'abord remercier et féliciter les organes consultatifs pour ces excellents rapports. Donc, ils sont à, à féliciter, à encourager. Je voudrais euh, intervenir sur euh, le projet de décision donc, en français, au point 4, qui, euh, à la lecture donc, de ce point 4, je, je pense qu'il y a une, une, une certaine ambiguïté dans la lecture de, de cet article, puisqu'on peut accueillir favorablement, si vous voulez, les aspects positifs, c'est-à-dire l'harmonisation, donc et les, les progrès réalisés, mais on ne peut pas accueillir favorablement des lacunes qui ont été identifiées. Donc je propose que ces deux, ces deux, ces deux expressions soient séparées. On pourrait, par exemple, dire donc, accueillir favorable, favorablement l'harmonisation et les commentaires sur le, le progrès réalisé, et couper la phrase et dire « prendre note ou prendre acte des lacunes identifiées pour la mise en œuvre de la Convention ». Je vous remercie. Merci beaucoup, monsieur le représentant de l'Algérie. Donc, je vous prie, les collègues de secrétariat, de refléter sur l'écran la proposition du représentant de l'Algérie. Mm, très bien. Donc, je passe maintenant la parole au rapporteur pour nous lire les documents tels qui a été, les amendements qui ont été présentés pour l'Algérie, s'il vous plaît, madame. Je vous lis euh, le paragraphe 4. Accueille favorablement l'harmonisation des rapports des organisations consultatives et les commentaires sur les progrès réalisés et prend note des lancunes identifiées pour la mise en œuvre de la Convention. Merci beaucoup, Madame la rapporteure. On est tous d'accord avec cet amendement. Je, sais pas, je vois qu'il n'y a pas de commentaire. Donc, euh, si nous sommes d'accord, on peut adopter euh, l'amendement de l'Algérie et passer maintenant à l'adoption de ah, la France. Madame, vous avez la parole. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Puisque c'est la première fois que la France s'exprime euh, lors de cette euh, session du comité, je voudrais remercier euh, très sincèrement les autorités cambodgiennes pour leur, leur accueil et, euh, et la, la façon dont elles ont accueilli euh, l'ensemble des, des participants à cette, euh, à cette grande conférence. Euh, je voulais juste apporter une petite précision technique et linguistique euh, remercier l'Algérie pour le, le soin qu'elle a, a mis de préciser et peut-être compléter en proposant identifier non pas pour mais dans la mise en œuvre de la convention Merci monsieur le président Très bien, merci beaucoup madame, tout à fait ce sont des apportations très importantes très précises donc euh, les collègues du secrétariat si vous pouvez prendre note Très bien. Y a-t-il des autres commentaires Donc, euh, je ne vois pas. Donc, euh, on passe maintenant, chers collègues, à l'adoption du document, la décision, donc le projet de décision 37 comme 5B, il est donc adopté tel qu'il est amendé. Merci beaucoup. Donc, uh, the time has come now to examine our next agenda item, item 5.6, which corresponds to the summary and follow-up on the Director General's meeting on the World Heritage Convention, Thinking Ahead, which has been organized in UNESCO's headquarters 2 and 3 October last year. 
Um, I now invite you to consider document WHC 1337.5C as referred of our debate. And on this item, I will also like to invite Mr. Rao, uh, the director of the World Heritage Center, to briefly present this document. Mr. Rao, you have the floor, please. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Uh, a number of speakers have already referred uh, to this uh, meeting that was uh, organized uh, last October at the initiative of the Director General. And uh, this was done uh, both within the framework of the 40th anniversary of the convention, as well as uh, on the request of many states parties uh, in order to be able to uh, have a free and frank exchange on uh, many of the procedures and processes of the convention uh, affecting all three pillars of the convention, uh, the states parties, uh, advisory bodies, uh, and the secretariat. So this uh, meeting was held over a two-day period on the 2nd and 3rd of October last year. Uh, the 2nd uh, October was devoted to a meeting of the Director General with the heads of the, each of the three advisory bodies. And the summary of that meeting was presented uh, next day to the plenary when all the states parties were present. And there was uh, a very uh, good discussion on various aspects uh, of the processes uh, concerning the uh, convention. Mr. President, uh, an annex to this document is the summary of the uh, discussions which took place on the 2nd and 3rd of October. Uh, the main themes uh, which uh, the discussions focused on were on the issue of tentative lists, nominations, conservation of properties, capacity building, roles and responsibilities of the advisory bodies and the secretariat, as well as the roles and responsibilities of the governing bodies, and uh, lastly, on the resource constraints and challenges facing uh, effective and efficient implementation of the convention. Part uh, two of this document, uh, Mr. President, uh, contains a very brief uh, summary of the follow-up actions that we have taken in order to be uh, able to report to the committee uh, the actions that we have implemented in line with the agreements that were reached at the meeting on the 2nd and 3rd of October. We have uh, basically drawn attention to the various uh, initiatives uh, taken to support states parties in uh, revising, reviewing, and establishing their tentative lists, uh, more uh, engagement of the advisory bodies in that process, as well as in the process of uh, mentoring uh, state parties in the development of uh, credible uh, nominations, uh, picking up on the example of the very good work that was done uh, throughout the African subcontinent in the last three years. We have extended that uh, experience to the Caribbean and small island developing states, both in the Pacific and in the Caribbean region. Uh, this was uh, drawn attention to the uh, by the chairperson of the executive board in her address to the opening ceremony last evening. We have uh, extended uh, the upstream project approach to more sites than are contained in the pilot uh, projects. Uh, so the upstream support is being provided in terms of advisory services uh, by the advisory bodies to various uh, other states parties, uh, significantly the uh, countries concerned with the Silk Route nominations, uh, as well as the uh, Kapaknyan uh, uh, nomination, which will be coming up for consideration. Uh, next year. Uh, we have also uh, provided for uh, enhanced uh, cooperation not only through the biannual bi meetings that are held between the Secretariat and the advisory bodies, but uh, more uh, open uh, consultation and discussions in, uh, <coughs> involving the state's parties as well uh, in various uh, aspects of implementing the convention. Uh, we have uh, enhanced our uh, efforts to build capacity of states' parties uh, in uh, 
in conservation uh, issues, uh, a number of capacity building activities that were reported to you by ICROM, uh, you have already taken note of, and all these have been possible with the support of uh, the uh, committee members and states parties who are supporting these initiatives in different uh, regions of the world. Uh, the roles and responsibilities of the advisory bodies and the Secretariat is something that has been uh, commented up upon uh, a number of times and uh, we are uh, constantly looking at improving uh, efficiencies in that process, particularly to avoid uh, duplication and you would see that uh, reflected in different uh, documents uh, uh, during the session, including in documents relating to the state of conservation monitoring uh, uh, that you will be considering later, later on. Uh, Mr. President, uh, I would not go into details of uh, many of the other uh, activities uh, that uh, have been implemented or are proposed to be implemented. Suffice to say that uh, we will be continuing to follow up on the agreements reached in that uh, landmark meeting through the implementation plan that has been developed uh, on the follow-up to the recommendation of the UNESCO external auditor, uh, both uh, for the uh, implementation of the recommendations on the global strategy as well as on the implementation of the recommendations on the partnership initiative. And uh, as the General Assembly will be reviewing both these implementation plans later in the year, this issue is going to come up uh, before all the states parties to the convention. Uh, the General Assembly will also consider the implementation plan on the Global Strategic Action Plan 2012-2022, uh, which will also be presented to the General Assembly. So this. Uh, matter will be discussed even in the General Assembly of States Parties later this year. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Mr. Rao. <clears throat> uh, dear colleagues, now I would like to open the floor for comments on these subjects. Uh, and before doing so, I would like to remind you that we also have to, uh, we are also invited to adopt the draft decision included in document WHC 1337.5C.3. So now the floor is yours. India, Mr. Ambassador, you have the floor, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'd first like to thank and congratulate the government of Cambodia for the wonderful arrangements, the hospitality, and the great interest that they have shown in making this a success. I'd like to thank you too, Mr. Chair, for the wise manner in which you've conducted the proceedings while you've been there. Let me turn to the item. This is perhaps one of the most fundamental. Over the past year, there has been a great deal of expressed dissatisfaction at the lack of transparency, of dialogue, of the need to encourage these processes, to make them more transparent. I think we have, um, this document does the DG a small disservice because it was her initiative to take the October meeting forward. But we also met later. We met in January, something that doesn't find mention here and should there, was, there were important expressions of what should be done and can be done. And to us, these are extremely important. So to come to the specifics, firstly, I think we'd like to know um, the, how these processes very specifically are going to be taken forward. We have some suggestions. In September 2013, as usual, the advisory bodies will meet this is a possible platform where member states could participate. I see the logistical limitations, but I'd love to hear what the advisory bodies would have to say. Information meetings tend to be repetitive, tend to be um, to contain material and content that could easily be disseminated. The January meeting was an information meeting, but transformed itself to an issues meeting. These are opportunities. The director of the World Heritage Centers has referred to the growing demand for 
an independent professional role for the World Heritage Center. Not just the issue of duplication, but where the World Heritage Center assumes a position which is independent of the advisory bodies and is known to the member states. I'm delighted by the fact that ICOMOS and IUCN have, in recent months, opened a dialogue with member states on nominations, on inscriptions, on state of conservation. I think it's a wonderful beginning. I think you need to institutionalize this and take it forward. You, it is possible to confuse these issues with acronyms, with the past, with 35 com, whatever, and 73 com, whatever, but I think you need a very clear concept and paper as to how you will promote dialogue, transparency. This is UNESCO's signature convention. This is the face of UNESCO. You cannot afford to have it mired in process and procedure. I would suggest, Chair, my colleague from the UAE spoke before this. I think we should spend time on this. I think the World Heritage Center should seriously think about how they can lend credence to these very important processes. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. And uh, may now invite further comments on this issue. Of course, Mr. Ambassador, you have mentioned too many uh, interesting topics. And uh, before uh, other comments, if I don't see, I might invite Mr. Rao to present additional comments. Estonia, I, before uh, Mr. Rao invite Estonia, you please, sir, take the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Estonia would also like to start by thanking the uh, government of Cambodia for this wonderful uh, um, welcome that we have received. And we would like to make <clears throat> some short comments concerning the item. Uh, first, uh, Estonia would like to highlight one aspect what uh, was discussed in length during the meeting. And that is the issue of tentative list and the issue of determining the potential of outstanding universal value before the process begins. The process that we know is time consuming and costly for the state parties. And that is why we believe it's really in the interest of everyone concerned that the potential of OUV is established before the process begins. And everyone at the meeting welcomed very much um, bigger involvement of advisory bodies in this process, which we also share. But uh, we also need to be aware that uh, the tentative list is a country-driven process, and the advisory bodies need uh, to be invited by the state party to, to participate <coughs> in this. And given the, the constraints that we have, the budgetary constraints and also the human resources constraints, it's important for the state parties to be active and to, uh, to find uh, the possibilities and means for inviting uh, advisor bodies in this work. Uh, <clears throat> another issue that we also believe is important that was raised during the meeting was um, that um, the extremely tight schedule that we have. And that concerns uh, both nominations and state of conservation reports. And as uh, for nominations, we believe a very useful proposal has been put forward in the operational guidelines working document, that is to make use of uh, uh, 30th of September deadline that used to be voluntary, but now it is proposed to be mandatory for the new nominations. We believe it's very useful. And as for state of conservation reports, uh, the 1st of February deadline is really very short, given that the committee meeting comes up in June. And as we have now established that uh, <clears throat> the, the normal, let's say, interval of SOC reports is two years. Maybe the committee could also discuss the option that, that if the um, next report is invited in two years, maybe you can 
bring forward the uh, 1st of February deadline if we find an opportunity for that. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments, representative of Estonia. Do we have another comment on this item? México. Por favor, tiene la palabra. Gracias, Presidente. Eh, retomando un poco el tema que eh, mencionaban precedentemente eh, nuestros colegas de Estonia, en cuanto a las listas indicativas, eh, seré muy breve nada más pedir eh, a los órganos consultivos y principalmente a los dos eh, más involucrados en, en los temas de evaluación de nuevas candidaturas, un trabajo coordinado eh, en virtud de los costos eh, que esto implica y de no poder eh, llevar a los sitios a expertos internacionales. Nosotros pediríamos, por ejemplo, en el caso de ICOMOS, un trabajo más coordinado con los comités nacionales, pero bajo una condición eh, muy específica, que esos comités nacionales, que en el tema América Latina y el Caribe eh, son... Eh, terriblemente irregulares los trabajos de los comités, que estos comités sean más profesionales, más objetivos y desde luego más transparentes, como mencionaba el embajador de la India. Gracias. Muchas gracias. Do we have another comment on this? With your permission, may now I pass the floor to some obs mem uh, observers uh, to present its re their remarks. So I recognize Brazil. Brazil, you have the floor now, please. Microphone not working. Can, can you please change uh, just the table uh, to check if... Come to it. Yeah. Please, um, I invite our colleagues of the organization to check Thank this you. technician problem, please. And, uh, well, now I see you. You have your microphone is working, so please, sir, present your comments. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I uh, have to thank the delegation of Stony for the good cooperation <laughs> to allow us to make this intervention. At the outset, allow us to thank the Cambodian authorities for the warm hospitality that they have provided, and congratulate you for assuming the works of this session, Mr. Chairman. Um, Brazil would like to follow up actually what Stonia had uh, said on tentative lists. We believe that uh, tentative list is, a, is the best opportunity for uh, um, mainstreaming the, uh, the work that the, the state will uh, eventually provide when they pr uh, write a nomination. Uh, we believe that um, what ECOMOS had presented during the last October uh, meeting as a paper provides a good basis for discussion in terms of revisions of the processes for tentative lists. We cannot, uh, we should pr uh, um, favor uh, listing properties that do have the capacity for demonstrating that their OUV. And uh, in that sense, we understand that uh, perhaps uh, additional revisions to the operational guidelines should uh, be necessary, might be necessary. And we think that these issues should also be, be brought to the attention of the uh, consultative body on the operational guidelines. So this is what we would have to say at this stage. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Now I invite, please, the WWF to take the floor on this item, please. Switch it on, please. It's okay. Hello, you can... Okay, okay it's right. working. Oh. 
Okay, please proceed, thank, Minister. Thank you very much for allowing me to address the committee, and we look forward to good and fruitful um, deliberations here. We're in contact with many delegations in, in many countries uh, doing much of the same work as uh, UNESCO, the World Heritage Committee members and IUCN, and that is to protect the outstanding values of the world's most special places. And we call on the committee to stay resolute in their work to do that. We've reflected on this report and we would like to add some suggestions to that. For us, it would help our work considerably if the committee were to provide better guidance on the social and economic benefits of World Heritage areas. It's very hard to sell just on the environment these days. You need to be able to also demonstrate those social and economic benefits in order to protect these places. We also think that um, it would be useful for early positive and proactive advice to individual state parties on the conservation needs of their sites. Um, we should ensure the, the functioning of uh, ecosystems and explore transboundary corporations. Many sites cross borders. Uh, we should look at the potential of corridors, uh, interlinked habitat, habitat areas and the use of buffer zones for protection and for mitigation of threats. Um, it would also be useful to start looking at areas beyond national jurisdiction and the values of World Heritage Areas or World Heritage Protection there. Um, implementation and guidance on conservation and management obligations would be useful and also to start exploring the linkages to other uh, multilateral environmental agreements such as the CBD and the HE targets. Finally, and most importantly, it's uh, important that we ensure the means of implementation so that we actually have the capacity and resources to protect World Heritage Sites for transmission to future generations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam, for your comments. Now I invite uh, Germany to take the floor, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you, WWF, for your uh, valuable intervention. <coughs> and uh, we really appreciate uh, NGOs taking the floor here and also your work outside of this room to help to preserve these uh, sites worldwide. I would like just to mention a, a very short uh, point on this issue of benefits. We fully agree that benefits of World Heritage should be demonstrated to a wider audience, that it's essential to grant support, uh, to, to gain wider support for these sites, and uh, Germany is uh, very happy to announce that uh, from now on we'll be supporting IUCN in a specific project on, in this regard to uh, explore in more detail the benefits of natural World Heritage sites worldwide. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments, Madam. If we have more comments on this item, I see none. Peru, veo al Perú, por favor, señor embajador. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. Es la primera intervención de mi delegación y queremos sumarnos a los agradecimientos al gobierno de Camboya por la preparación de este evento. Quería ser muy breve y referirme a la discusión sobre las listas indicativas en la reunión que convocó la directora general en octubre del año pasado. En principio la posibilidad de asociar a, a los órganos asesores a la elaboración de la lista indicativa es eh, una cuestión que tiene una serie de elementos eh, positivos eh, en términos eh, de preservar eh, que los procesos eh, reflejen adecuadamente el valor universal de los bienes. Sin embargo, este es un asunto que se ha iniciado en la discusión, debemos recordar que la elaboración de las listas indicativas conforme a la convención son es, um, competencias de los eh, Estados partes. Eh, creemos que estas competencias eh, no deberían debilitarse en ningún caso y pensamos que en su conjunto 
las eh, conclusiones eh, que se presentan en el documento anexo eh, son una primera aproximación a este y a los demás temas que se discutieron en octubre. Eh, creemos que, dada la importancia de estos temas, eh, debería seguir discutiéndose con una mayor participación de los Estados partes y que se trata de un proceso complejo en el que debemos eh, evaluar eh, de una manera muy precisa ¿no? eh, cuál sería eh, el futuro del de procedimiento para elaborar las listas indicativas, eh, fortaleciendo las eh, competencias que en esta materia la Convención otorga a las partes. Gracias, señor presidente. Muchas gracias a usted, señor embajador. May now invite other committee members or observers for further comments on this issue. If not, I would like to invite Mr. Rao to present uh, additional comments. Please, Mr. Rao, take the floor. Thank you, very, Mr. President. Uh, thank the members of the committee and observers who have made uh, comments on this particular document. Uh, uh, this is indeed a very significant uh, uh, document, uh, the initiative taken by the Director General, and uh, we definitely need to monitor very closely the implementation of all the agreements that have been uh, reached uh, in that particular meeting. Uh, there were a number of comments uh, that have been made, uh, Mr. Uh, President. Uh, some of them are in the nature of uh, suggestions, not questions, so there is uh, uh, nothing by way of a response that uh, perhaps I need to give. Uh, there were some suggestions, and uh, for example, India mentioned about involving state parties in the meetings of the ABs. Now, I just want to clarify that uh, the Secretariat and the ABs have biannual meetings twice a year, uh, essentially to look at the decisions that the committee adopted and to share the work between us as to how we are going to implement those uh, decisions and what reports we have to prepare. This is a working meeting. I don't think involving states parties in that process is essential. However, involving states parties in discussions with the advisory bodies and, uh, uh, and the secretariat is a good uh, thing, but that is not the forum. We can have separate uh, meetings for, uh, for that purpose. How we go about uh, the logistics of uh, organizing these consultations once or twice a year is again for the committee to consider because there are uh, resource uh, uh, implications uh, on that issue. We have absolutely no point in convening as many meetings as uh, the committee uh, uh, wishes, provided the resources and the time uh, is available to do so. Uh, in terms of uh, issue-based interactions, uh, I think the uh, thematic uh, meetings, expert meetings that are organized on, uh, I just read out the uh, Secretariat's report on urban architecture, on the uh, visual uh, impact of development projects, on the involvement of indigenous peoples, these are issue-based uh, interactions. Again, uh, there are resource constraints, but when they are hosted, these meetings. They are uh, open for states parties to participate within the limits of uh, the resources that are available. So I don't think there, there is any hesitation or lack of effort from the Secretariat to, to convene and organize these kinds of meetings. There is a often used terminology of transparency, lack of transparency and uh, accountability. And it's very difficult for us to understand what exactly that means because the Secretariat uh, implements the regulations, the operational guidelines and the rules of procedures that the committee it's, itself has established. We follow them. If you want these to be changed, it is the committee's sovereign decision to do, uh, to do so. But as far as uh, the, there are rules which require us to function in a certain manner, we, we uh, act according to those uh, rules. But there is uh, no question of us being secretive or non-transparent or 
shirking our accountability. We are there, open, available for states parties to con consult us, and they do. I don't think uh, there are any uh, problems on that account of uh, being approachable or, or, or receiving responses to questions or clarification. So if there is more precision on precise procedures that uh, we should be following, please establish them in the rules of procedure and the operational guidelines, and we'd be more than uh, happy, to, happy to follow them. Mr. President, there were also a number of uh, comments on tentative lists. Uh, the last comment made by Peru, uh, I think uh, there, there was a bit of a misunderstanding perhaps in the intent of what was agreed on the, in the meeting on the 2nd. It's not as though the uh, tentative lists will now be uh, written only by the advisory bodies. Tentative lists, uh, like nominations, is the prerogative of the state's parties. There was uh, the suggestion that uh, states' parties need to be provided guidance and support uh, by the advisory bodies uh, in uh, ensuring that there is potential for some of these sites to uh, meet uh, the criteria and uh, demonstrate outstanding universal value. So advisory bodies are available to be able to contribute to your effort, and only if you so desire. Uh, if you don't, uh, there is no uh, requirement that you have to involve the advisory bodies. Uh, comments made on demonstrating the social and economic benefits of World Heritage Sites, absolutely, there is no uh, question. Uh, we had, in fact, if you remember, brought out a publication with uh, Cambridge University Press for the 40th anniversary last year titled uh, Benefits Beyond Borders, which uh, uh, includes uh, uh, 26 uh, case studies from around the world, uh, precisely showing uh, what benefits uh, these World Heritage Sites bring to local communities and to local and regional economies. Uh, I know that several uh, states parties have also carried out studies. Uh, Australia carried out uh, a, a very interesting study a few years ago. The, the United Kingdom has done, the United States have uh, done. These are some of the studies that we are aware of in which uh, the economic, social, and environmental benefits of World Heritage study, uh, Sites have been analyzed and, uh, and published. Of course, there is a need for uh, many more such uh, studies to be carried out. Uh, Mr. President, I think I have uh, touched upon the various comments that have been made. Uh, the remaining are uh, by way of suggestions. There were a few comments made uh, uh, in, uh, in relation to the advisory bodies, and perhaps you may wish to give them the floor as well. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Mr. Rao. And uh, of course, I would like to listen to the advisory body's remarks. But before I see the representative of India who wishes to take the floor, please, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you, Chair. I did hope that the advisory bodies would uh, respond or be given the opportunity to respond to the suggestions. And I'm glad it's being done now. Um, dialogue is not just about meetings. It's also a state of mind. If you feel there is no problem, then there is a problem. And I think this has been expressed on the floor. It's been expressed at St. Petersburg. That is precisely why the Director General took that wonderful step. So it is not just about we have done enough. Obviously, you've not done enough. If you had, we wouldn't be discussing it. We wouldn't need to discuss it. Let me also add that the September meeting that the advisory bodies have it is not that states parties need to participate in that meeting. It's a platform. It's an opportunity. And I'd welcome at least the advisory body that is hosting it this year, which is IUCN, to take the floor and tell us if it's possible to organize um, a small interaction between member states. You have to look for the opportunities. You have to create it. I would feel that there is, there is definitely a problem. And if you talk of transparency, let me, let me tell you that um, when uh, reactive monitoring missions go, when missions go, the World Heritage Center must file, their representative must file an independent report. You cannot have a situation where the advisory bodies and the World Heritage Center feel there has to be a way in which that is done. And that is how professionalism comes. There are other instances. There are always ways to improve. And I think the time has come to take those steps. So if you feel there is no problem, 
then I think there is a problem. If there is a problem, I think we should look at ways of addressing it. I'd welcome the advisory bodies to take the floor. This is a theme that will recur through this meeting. At the January meeting, it was excellent, it was wonderful. But the senior management of the culture sector and the World Heritage Center left in four minutes. The legal advisor left in six, which is not a bad thing actually. But you need to participate. And that's the point. You need to use every opportunity that you get to go for this dialogue. That's the point, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador, for your very important remarks. And now I would like to give the floor to the advisory bodies, maybe uh, the representative of IUCN first. Uh, well, thank you, Chair. Uh, there were some questions, uh, so I'll just try to address the points that have been raised and uh, uh, elaborate further. I think, firstly, for IUCN, we see the, um, the meeting in last October and the documentation of its results as extremely important. Uh, within the organisation, we're currently just finalising what will be a management response to that, so there are some recommendations and we think we should indicate uh, IUCN's position in relation to them as a transparent uh, um, response to the points raised, so that, that we hope will be available at some stage later this week. In terms of the different points that are raised, so firstly in terms of dialogue, we would agree that uh, the, the process has started, but we need to find lots of different ways in which that can proceed. Um, it's already been mentioned that we do have um, space here at the committee to allow for some of that uh, dialogue. We do have an advisory body's uh, pavilion, as we could dub it, uh, which is in room four on the fourth floor. And on every one of the lunch times for an hour and a half, we'll be running various events, which will include uh, later in the meeting an open forum to allow for issues to be raised, but a number of specific events on different aspects of our work. So we hope that space will be used. Um, and please do come and visit us there. Um, on the specific point of the advisory body uh, meeting, as it's called, which we'll host in September, um, perhaps not in that meeting, but if it was wished to organize um, a, a meeting at IUCN, we have the facilities to do that. What I think as an advisory body we can't do if it's an engagement with states parties is make the decision about how that would happen. I think that the question of how states parties in a small group would come to a meeting like that must be a matter between the parties and uh, I don't think we could uh, pick and choose for ourselves who should be invited. So that, that would be the, the, uh, the question we would put back. But from a logistical point of view, uh, there would be no difficulty to organize perhaps a separate meeting to the advisory bodies meeting if that was what the wish of this uh, committee was and if, if, if it was resourced. And I think that would be a question for the, for the secretariat to work on with the parties. On the other matters that are raised, I think on tentative lists, clearly we don't uh, wish to uh, take any role which the states parties are not comfortable with. Um, it is an advisory role we provide, so anything we should do uh, should be at the invitation of states parties. But I think we do need to find the operational ways to support states. So it's, it's good to talk about the idea of engaging in tentative lists, but how do we do that? Um, one means is to provide better, better ways to operationalize our thematic studies. So we acknowledge the support of uh, Germany uh, with a thematic study that will launch at this meeting, uh, and also Australia uh, for a thematic study on Criterion 7, also to be launched at this meeting, and Switzerland, as mentioned in the advisory bodies. Uh, presentation that have supported capacity building in our networks. So that's one area, how do we make that operational? Uh, and also the model that the African World Heritage Fund has been deploying um, in support of nominations in Africa, which is starting to show results. These are operational uh, questions, but how else can we see the, concretely how we support tentative lists, not just the idea of doing that, but uh, some models for how it works. Uh, and the last comment, just to, uh, uh, to thank um, uh, Germany for their um, announcement on the, um, the study of benefits. I think it's a general consensus that um, whilst we are preoccupied by outstanding universal value, if we don't engage more largely in how World Heritage Sites contribute benefits uh, to, uh, to communities uh, and to society, then uh, we're missing a major part of the jigsaw. So we're very pleased that piece of work will move forward, but it has to be part of a larger effort to build that part of our thinking into uh, the, the operationalization of the convention. I hope I've picked up the main points. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much to the representative of IUCN. I'm sure that the committee members are taking good note of the comments. Now may I invite the representative of ICOMOS to present 
its comments, please, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we, I'm not quite sure what we could add to what uh, IUCN already said. It was quite eloquent, and, and a lot of what they said applies to, uh, to ECOMOS, of course. Uh, I think I just want to reiterate a number of points. I think we really poured our heart out in the report that we produced uh, for the Looking Forward meeting, and we tried to produce as many ideas that we thought could work effectively to improve the, uh, the, the implementation of the convention and also to to eliminate something that we're very concerned about, which is the unnecessary expenditure of, of financial resources, the, uh, the elevation of, of community expectations that always accompany nominations and that are absolutely uh, 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 have a, a terrible impact once you, um, if ECOMOS or IUCN recommend against inscription. So we really would like to avoid this, uh, this, this unnecessary uh, and wasteful uh, experiences by trying to figure out how to, we can move ahead together. Now, in saying all this, we have to underline that while the committee uh, has a lot of freedom to do and undo and act uh, in whichever way it feels is, is, is most uh, appropriate, ECOMOS and the advisory bodies are really very tightly bound by the operational guidelines that you give us. These are the rules of the game that you give us. And it doesn't mean necessarily that we like them. It means the, the, uh, simply that we have to abide by them. So in that respect, we reiterate what we said in Paris, that we open, we would love to open a, a very uh, frank, uh, however brutal it may be, uh, but we would welcome a, a very frank uh, dialogue as to how we can make the convention uh, a, a happier place, how we can make these committee meetings uh, more, less, less belligerent uh, and less confrontational, and, uh, and how we can achieve the goal that we all want, which in the end uh, is the conservation of the World Heritage Properties and the recognition of all properties that have outstanding universal value. So I think we're all on the same page. It's just a matter of figuring out how we can get to the, to the, to the ends that we're all trying to achieve. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. May now I invite the representative of ICRAM to present it, to your comments, please, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, we would uh, agree with, obviously, with uh, most of the comments coming from IUCN and, and from ECOMOS, although I'm not sure that we really want brutal discussions, but uh, having open discussions, I think, are cer is certainly very useful. Um, I, uh, just in terms of the, the substance of some of the suggestions, suggestions. Um, I would point out that the idea of opening dialogue uh, with states' parties uh, at various points in time I think is a, is, is a very good one. I'm not sure that the September meeting is, is necessarily the best uh, time to do that because sometimes that takes place in Paris, sometimes it takes place in, in Rome, and sometimes it takes place in Switzerland. So that may be a little bit more difficult to organize, but certainly the advisory body meeting in January is always in Paris, and there are certainly other opportunities throughout the year where the advisory bodies are in Paris for uh, uh, for, for different meetings, for information meetings, for, for other reasons. And there is no reason why we couldn't organize a sort of a, a, sep, you know, a side meeting to those moments when we're, when we're, um, when we're in Paris to talk about a, a, a specific theme. We could talk about tentative lists at one point in time. We could talk about nominations at one point in time, et cetera. I mean, that's something that, that I think we could, we could theoretically uh, work out uh, some sort of a schedule. I think, th I think this would need to be a, an ongoing process, and so we could sort of divide those meetings up into, into Various, uh, into various topics uh, as we go along. Um, in relation to tentative lists and nominations, um, again, that's not necessarily uh, specifically ECROM's area uh, where we're working, but, um, uh, but we do want to point out that the convention itself is about international cooperation, and that's one of the reasons that we, we strongly endorse the, the Africa World Heritage Fund model, uh, which is bringing together states parties from the region uh, to, to look at the tentative list and especially look at nominations. And it's, a, it, it's an ongoing process. It's not one small workshop that then disbands and, and, and people go away. It's actually, um, uh, it, it's actually an ongoing process with more than, more than one uh, regional encounter with mentoring processes that go on in between. And, and, and I think that that's, a, that's a, a model that might be useful for, um, 
um, for different regions of the world to, to explore, doing it on a regional or at least a sub-regional basis, let's say. So in any event, we look forward to continued dialogue, and I think it's really just a question of working out the logistics and figuring out exactly when and exactly what topics we're going to be talking about at any given time. But we certainly look forward to that continued dialogue with states' parties. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your comments. Now I invite Mr. Bander to present your Thank you. comments. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Now, I just wanted to, to offer a comment because, of course, the intention of the Director General and the, all the management of, uh, of, uh, of UNESCO and the Secretariat is to create the uh, best conditions for uh, the advancement of the Convention. So I think that this has been demonstrated by, by the opening of uh, meetings that we had last year, and we will continue having it. Um, I don't think we are saying that there is no problem. I, 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 I would like to uh, gently, you know, <laughs> comment on the, on the on the on that because it's obviously that there is a, you know, a discussion ongoing. Maybe there are no problems, but there is a discussion on procedures, on methodologies, on you know, processes that have to do with the a complex system, the one that has been established uh, around, uh, on many years around the. Um, we, we see them uh, very clearly in the, in the, in the uh, meetings of the committee and during the year. Uh, some of them are easily to, easy to address because they are made up of, you know, essentially a, a, a formalization of goodwill or whatever. Others have to do with the change that we have to bring into the system. Now, uh, I think you have a working group on this. Operation guidelines is the territory for this kind of uh, uh, innovation exchanges. It will be a continuous process. So I would like to say that we are completely open to uh, any discussion. I think the DG has demonstrated that, and we will continue if there is a need to have uh, more uh, clarifications, more uh, say information meetings, more more moments in which this can be done. We will. Do it, and uh, and of course uh, uh, anything that comes from the, the World Heritage Committee's uh, decisions uh, through the working group on the operation guidelines to your decision will be uh, duly taken on board. This is uh, our our system. This is a service to the member states. So there is no, uh, I don't see any any opposition. If I can say, it's just a matter of fine tuning the the engine. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Banderin. Do we have additional comments on this item after listening to the comments of committee members and the representative of the advisory bodies? If not, uh, dear colleagues, I would like now to invite you to uh, take a look on the document and the draft decision 37.5C. If we all agree with this document, we can adapt it. I was informed that it was an amendment that was sent directly to the rapporteur, so I may now invite the rapporteur to uh, explain us this, please. Madam, you had the floor. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I would uh, just like to, to say that it was uh, we uh, received amendment by India uh, concerning the paragraph five and six, uh, although it was not uh, introduced by the state party uh, orally uh, before we received. So you have amendment on the screen. If you want, I can read it. Thank you very much, Madam. Um, may maybe invite the uh, distinguished delegate of India to explain us. Uh, explain us. Your, your, Thank your you, Chair. Report. Actually, this um, um, reflects the discussion over the last ten minutes, and all it does is ask the World Heritage Centre to prepare and implement over the next year a plan to enhance, encourage, and enhance this dialogue. There is site-specific dialogue, which countries, member states are worried about, which may be nominations or inscriptions. There is issue-based dialogue, which is on processes and procedures. So how will you do that? And uh, let the World Heritage Center prepare that. The second part is, having prepared and implemented it, please report to the next meeting of the committee on what you have done, 
how you have done it, what are the outcomes and results. That's all. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador, for your explanations. So please now, dear colleagues, uh, I invite you to take a look on the amendment presented by the delegation of India. If you have further comments on this. Made then. Germany. Germany, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, um, and thank you, India, for the proposal. Uh, as far as the uh, proposal on paragraph 5 is concerned, um, I have a certain difficulty in understanding how the, the center um, should plan and implement something between the advisory bodies and the member states, which <laughs> I have a certain difficulty in seeing how this can be, can be done in, uh, first of all, in only one year and how the role of the, what the role of the advisory bodies is in this process and the role of the member states. So maybe we can take a bit of discussion on this and maybe we can hear um, the center uh, how, they, how, how this can be, can be done in one year and we can hear the center and the advisory bodies on this. Thank you. Thank you very much. India, uh, Russia, please, Madam Ambassador, you have the floor. Уважаемые коллеги, тоже разрешите от имени Российской Федерации поблагодарить наших камбоджийских коллег за замечательный прием, за гостеприимство и за замечательные условия работы. Уважаемые коллеги, мы на протяжении уже многих сессий говорим о том, что мы хотим более прозрачных, более ясных и тесных отношений с консультативными органами. Но у нас есть Центр Всемирного Наследия, который действительно должен способствовать этому процессу, как нам представляется, поскольку он как раз находится в середине между странами-членами, консультативными органами. И... Это как бы, насколько я понимаю, это как бы начало пути. Давайте попробуем. Мы все время говорим о, об этой транспарентности. Давайте попробуем. Пускай Центр Всемирного Наследия наиболее сложные случаи возьмет и предложит, как это сделать, как провести эти консультации. А дальше мы на следующей сессии посмотрим, что из этого вышло. Не надо гнаться за количеством, а надо взять просто несколько случаев, как, так сказать, пилотный проект. Спасибо. Thank you very much, Madam Ambassador. Do we have further comments? Maybe the Indian delegation would like to take the floor? Uh, no, Chair, I just, uh, since the question was asked, you're right, I've often wondered how you do things in one year, like prepare state of conservation reports in one year and discuss them in the next, I agree. But dialogue is an ongoing process. We're not saying you will complete everything in one year. Please start. Let's review it after a year, and you will need to continue and continue and continue. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Je vois la France, Madame, s'il vous plaît. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Euh, non pas sur le fond, mais sur la forme, je voulais simplement vous indiquer que nous sommes à la disposition du secrétariat pour améliorer la formulation en français des, des amendements qui ont, qui ont été proposés. Je vous remercie. Merci beaucoup, Madame. Bien sûr, nous comptons sur toi. Uh, I can see Estonia wishes to take the floor. Estonia, then Switzerland. Thank you very much. <clears throat> we think um, uh, that uh, if the World Heritage Center were to prepare and also implement a plan that really is uh, about a dialogue between states parties and advisory bodies, uh, maybe this is not the best possibility. And um, I think it's important, as the original uh, proposal says, to encourage really all parties in this process. That means the center, the advisory bodies, and the state's parties uh, to be involved in, in this work and to continue the efforts that have already been made. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam. 
Now I invite the representative of Switzerland, please, to take the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Acceptez que je commence moi aussi à remercier les autorités cambodgiennes pour l'accueil qu'elles nous ont réservé maintenant et l'accueil à venir. Euh, Monsieur le Président, j'interviens spontanément sur la proposition du délégué indien euh, parce que je ne vois pas d'opposition fondamentale entre le texte qui a été barré et le texte qui est proposé. Euh, à la suite de la déléguée de l'Estonie, je pense que ce qui est barré ne devrait pas l'être et devrait continuer à constituer le cadre de référence global de l'interaction générale entre tous les États partis et que la proposition euh, en bleu euh, pourrait venir la compléter en quelque sorte, mais certainement pas la remplacer. Je vous remercie. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le représentant. Euh, maintenant, j'ai envie de le représentant du Qatar. Shukran Saïd Raïs. نتناول الكلمة للمرة الثانية هذا الصباح ونود ابتداء أن نشكر الحكومة الكمبودية على حسن الاستقبال والضيافة أما فيما يتعلق بهذا, بهذا النقاش فنعتقد بأن الجميع متفق على الحوار ولكن نظن ونعتقد بأن ممثل الهند يطرح صيغة عملية لطريقة الحوار ولطريقة النقاش خلال يعني السنة القادمة فأنا أعتقد بأن هذا المقترح لكونه يصب في الناحية العملية لطريقة النقاش نقترح أنه مقترح جيد شكرا Merci beaucoup euh, Je vois le Sénégal S'il vous plaît monsieur euh, Merci euh, monsieur le président euh, nous, nous pensons que dans le système que nous avons, il y a un opérateur stratégique dans la mise en œuvre de la Convention, qui est le centre. Il faut vraiment faire de telle sorte qu'il puisse être l'interface, le point où toutes les synergies se rencontrent. Euh, de ce point de vue-là, nous pensons qu'il serait peut-être intéressant d'expérimenter la proposition qui a été faite par nos amis indiens. Merci. Merci beaucoup, monsieur. Et ahora, invito al representante de Colombia a tomar la palabra, por favor. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. En primer lugar, quisiéramos también eh, agradecer eh, al Reino de Cambodia por la amabilidad, la hospitalidad y la generosidad con que nos alberga en este hermoso país. Eh, me parece que hay un, o nos parece que hay un, un punto de, de duda muy grande respecto a la transparencia en la redacción que se hace y se hace tácitamente una acusación al Centro del Patrimonio Mundial que no nos parece conveniente. Creemos que cuando se habla de mejorar la transparencia está quedando ese fondo de duda respecto a si el Centro del Patrimonio Mundial es transparente o no en su labor. Muchas gracias por sus comentarios. Je vois la Géry. S'il vous plaît, madame. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Euh, je, ne parle pas, je ne parlerai pas de la, de la forme euh, donc, dont est rédigé euh, cette, ce point 5, mais je voudrais parler du fond. Il est certain que le Centre du patrimoine mondial a des attributions et des prérogatives. Et il ne manque pas de faire dans la transparence la plupart du temps, et ce n'est pas un reproche que nous faisons. Mais il y a une réalité, une réalité qui est celle du dialogue. Les organes consultatifs sont par essence libres et indépendants. Un État dialogue avec son, son représentant qui est le centre du patrimoine mondial. Donc c'est à l'intérieur du centre du patrimoine mondial qu'il faut trouver la solution de mettre en place un mécanisme, une organisation qui puisse permettre aux États de dialoguer quand ils, quand ils le veulent sur des sujets qui les intéressent. Euh, bien sûr, il y a les groupes de travail, mais c'est des groupes euh, qui se réunissent euh, une fois l'an ou deux fois l'an et qui posent des problèmes de ressources actuellement. Donc nous, nous sommes d'accord sur le principe tel qu'il est dit, par le, tel qu'il est énoncé par, euh, par l'Inde, 
Et je pense qu'il y a une différence entre la première rédaction et la deuxième, c'est que la, la rédaction actuelle propose du concret. Propose du concret. Mettons en place, s'il si, si y a besoin de l'aide de, de certains États, mettons en place au niveau du Centre du patrimoine mondial une, un espace de dialogue entre les organisations consultatives, mais par le biais du Centre du patrimoine mondial. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Merci beaucoup, Madame, pour votre commentaire. Maintenant, j'invite la Russie à prendre la parole. Madame. Merci beaucoup, que vous me la Уважаемые коллеги, мне кажется, что тут нет абсолютно противоречия между тем, что было предложено, и что предложено Индии. И мне бы казалось, что если говорить о проекте решения, то можно было бы оставить и часть, которую предложила Эстония и Швейцария, поскольку это звучит более общее о том, что нужна транспарентность, Нужен, нужно усиление диалога в целом. А второе, это действительно некие конкретные шаги, с которых мы бы могли начать. А через год посмотреть, что из этого вышло, работает ли это, или как-то по-другому это должно работать. Это, как еще раз говорю, пилотный проект. Спасибо. Thank you very much, Madam Ambassador. Now, now I invite the representative of Mali to take the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I think that the dialogue exists already. We talk about establishing a dialogue, the dialogue exists. The dialogue exists between the Centre of the World War, the State of the Party and the Organ Consultative. It's a way to improve. Au niveau du comité de, du patrimoine mondial, nous, nous, nous sommes l'aile politique de la mise en œuvre de la Convention. Les organes consultatifs, comme quelqu'un l'a si bien dit ici, s'inspirent essentiellement d'outils pratiques tels que les orientations. Et il nous faut, nous, membres du comité, maîtriser ces outils-là. Donc la première démarche consiste, si vous voulez, à maintenir dans le plan prévu ce renforcement des capacités dont je parlais tantôt des membres du comité. C'est extrêmement important. Et je pense que l'autre rôle fondamental doit être continué à être joué par le centre du patrimoine mondial, qui joue ce rôle d'interface entre les États partis et les organes consultatifs. Sinon, le dialogue, il est là, il existe, mais il s'agit de l'approfondir. Je vous remercie. Merci beaucoup, monsieur. Euh, maintenant, j'ai envie de représentant du Irak à prendre la parole, s'il vous plaît. Shukran, Sayyid Al-Rais. Fi l'bidaya, nashkur l'hukoum l'Kambodia ala hizn al-ziyafa wa karam al-istiqbal. Wa naïd l'aqtarah l'hned ala aqtarah an yakoun l'hwar hadif wa binna bina l'dewa l'a'za wa markaz l'tarat l'alami fa l'siyaga l'hindiya naraha akthar fa'aliyya man baghiyya t'siyagat. Shukran jazilin. Thank you very much for your comments. I see Estonia again asking for the floor. Please proceed. Thank you very much. <clears throat> we think that uh, perhaps one solution could also be that, as we have established the dialogue that has been going on, uh, that we keep uh, new six paragraph and we learn at the next meeting about this process and the, uh, the achievements that we have had. But maybe the proposal proposed under paragraph 5 by India is a little too specific because if the World Heritage Center were really to implement a plan that maybe the advisory bodies and the state's parties don't, feel use, uh, don't um, think that it is useful, then it's uh, not a very <coughs> wise uh, way forward, because really the site-specific dialogue between advisory bodies and uh, member states, it's a matter between those two. Thank you. Thank you very much, madam. Do we have... Yes, apparently translation is was interrupted, so... Interpretation is not working. Ask, ask. 
it, it's okay now? Is it okay now? It's working? Please, interpreters, I would like to know. Is the Russian, Spanish, Arabic interpretation working? Not yet. So please, we, we will have to wait just one minute while we solve this problem. So you speak to the interpreters, you speak to the committee members and ask them whether they are getting in different languages. Okay, so now I address again to the committee members to know if they have the interpretation. Is it working? Not yet. Apparently, we have an electrical problem in the ca in the cabin, so so we won't have the chance not even to get the French interpretation, which uh, is blocking us to to, to to keep working in in, uh, in French or English, our working languages. So we still have to wait. Apparently, it's working now. So, my address again to the committee members. It's okay? Okay, so now uh, I would like to come back again to Estonia. Please, sir, uh, if you can uh, repeat your comments, because actually, while you were speaking, we had this uh, electricity cut. So, so, I would like to, to listen to you again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, we were proposing that. Perhaps uh, one solution would be also to keep the new paragraph 6 as was proposed by India. That will mean that we get to know at the next committee meeting uh, the progress about this issue. But as uh, the original paragraph 5, we prefer to keep it as it was because we feel that uh, the new proposal maybe is too specific and we also think that uh, a proposal to, to really to prepare such a plan and uh, moreover to implement a plan that is really an issue between advisory bodies and member states might cause some problems because perhaps uh, advisory bodies and member states for instance do not agree with this plan uh, that has already been implemented by the proposal. And really, also, we would like to underline that the site-specific dialogue is between advisory bodies and member states. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam, for your comments. And now I invite the representative of Malaysia to take the floor. 
you very much, Mr. President. We have heard several combinations of five and six. Uh, Malaysia would like to suggest that we um, keep um, five, but we modify it. Um, request um, the World Heritage Centre to prepare a plan to further encourage um, dialogue and transparency um, to, further uh, to further enhance and facilitate dialogue, communication and transparency and report on this at the 38th session of the World Heritage Committee. So it's a combination of the three without going into the details. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Madam. India, please. Thank you, and um, I think the point has been made that something needs to be done. It's for the World Heritage Center to rise to the occasion and prepare a report which they would give to the next committee. Insofar as um, the content of the resolution is concerned, frankly, it doesn't mean or require that much. I think the suggestion of the Russian Federation is a good one. Try it. I think the specificity which is there in five and six is to help you think it out. The general point made by Estonia is also valid. At the end of the day, I think we should come together, and Malaysia has a good suggestion. But at the end of the day, the message to the World Heritage Center is something needs to be done, and you need to tell us about it the next time. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. Now I give the floor to the representative of Japan, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, this is my first intervention, uh, so I'd like to express our gratitude uh, to the government of Cambodia for kindly hosting this meeting. Okay. And for the, uh, this issue, uh, Japanese delegation would like to support the uh, proposal by the Malaysia. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. Now I invite uh, South Africa to take the floor, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, we've had the various um, suggestions that have been made. I think we still need to give a chance, uh, just give a chance as the um, the delegate of India has mentioned to uh, his uh, proposal, uh, maybe the combination of the two, as has been suggested, that we keep the first one. But I think the second one should still remain as it was in the beginning. And let's give it a chance. If there are problems with it, then it would be reviewed in the next year. But if we remove it completely from now, we, we do not know how it will come again. Let's try and have a, a way of starting now to see how it works. Thanks. Thank you, Madam. Do we have additional comments on this item? شكرا السيد الرئيس أنا أعتقد أن إيضاحات الهند الأخيرة تتفق مع ما تم اقتراحها من إستونيا وروسيا وماليزيا وأخيرا لذلك نحن في في حالة توافق يعني فقط نريد الخروج إلى نحن نعتقد أن الحفاظ على خمسة وستة بصياغة أخيرة تأخذ بالاعتبار المداخلات التي تفضلت بها الوفود سيقودنا إلى إلى توافق على هذا الأمر يعني وفقط أود أن أعلق على ما طرحته الزميلة من إستونيا 
بخصوص مركز التراث العالمي نحن نعتقد أن هي محقة بأن الأمر يخص الدول الأعضاء والجهات الاستشارية لكن مركز التراث العالمي مهمة تفاصيلات يعني أن يقدم هذه الخدمة لدول الأعضاء والجهات الاستشارية وهو لا يقرر ولكنه شريك أيضا في هذا العمل الذي نقوم به شكرا Merci beaucoup, monsieur. Et maintenant, j'ai envie de la Suisse à prendre la parole, s'il vous plaît, monsieur. Merci, monsieur le président. Puis-je vous demander euh, si la proposition qui était présentée par notre collègue de Malaisie euh, pourrait être euh, reproduite sur les écrans, pour ce qu'elle me semblait être digne d'intérêt Je vous remercie. Oui, merci beaucoup, Monsieur l'Ambassadeur. Donc, j'invite euh, au représentant de Malaisie, euh, s'il vous plaît, si vous pouvez juste répéter votre proposition afin que le, le secrétariat, nos collègues de secrétariat puissent euh, prendre note. She sent, it, she sent it in writing, so it's okay. Ah, okay. I was informed. We already have it in writing, so we will ask our colleagues to. To put it on the screen. Thank you. Anyhow, uh, I would like just to invite the representative of Malaysia to uh, uh, explain us uh, their remarks because uh, uh, the colleagues of the Secretary, they would like to take note uh, in order that it will be very well uh, reflected. So, Madam, please, if you can uh, repeat your, your, your proposals on the text. Thank you very much, President, but I need to see the um, draft resolution. I did not write it down. Request the World Heritage Center to prepare a plan to encourage and enha uh, to further enhance and facilitate um, Could I see number five, please? Further enhance and facilitate dialogue, communication and transparency in all processes of the convention. and report to the 38th session of the World Heritage Committee. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, please, the colleagues of the Secretary, I would like to take note of this. Maintenant, j'ai envie de la représentante de l'Algérie, s'il vous plaît. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Toujours dans le même esprit, mais quatre ans plus abrégé, nous proposons la rédaction suivante. Demande au Centre du patrimoine mondial d'engager, au cours de l'année, une démarche favorisant le dialogue et la communication dans le cadre de la mise en œuvre des mécanismes de la Convention. Le mot « transparence » n'y est pas, parce que nous considérons que le dialogue et la communication sont les fondements de la transparence. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Merci beaucoup, Madame. Euh, la Suisse, vous avez la parole, s'il vous plaît. Oui, merci, Monsieur le Président. 
je reprenais la parole pour suggérer euh, ma compréhension de ce qui apparaît maintenant comme le point 7. Je ne le voyais pas comme point 7, mais comme remplacement euh, de la deuxième partie du point 5 qui nous était soumise au départ. Euh, ce à quoi je souscris. Et je tiens à ajouter que, par ailleurs, je souscris également à la proposition alternative, mais de peu, euh, de la déléguée de l'Algérie. Je rappelle dans ce contexte que notre collègue et distingué représentant de l'Inde nous avait fait savoir, lors de sa dernière intervention, que « the wording itself uh, was not to be uh, much of a problem in as much as his concerns have been taken care of ». I thank you. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur l'Ambassadeur. Vous avez raison. Donc, euh, maintenant, je passe la parole à la Fédération de Russie. Madame, s'il vous plaît. Уважаемые коллеги, ну вот мы сейчас занимаемся такой литературной работой. Это, конечно, важная для дипломатов работа, безусловно. Вот, но думаю, что мы все понимаем, о чем мы говорим. И мне бы хотелось, прежде чем мы примем окончательное решение, попросить Центр Всемирного Наследия немножечко прокомментировать, как они видят вот эту свою работу, с чего бы они начали эту работу, потому что для, для нас, для стран-членов, так же, как и для консультативных органов, конечно, Комитет Всемирного Наследия – это такой ключевой, ключевая организация, куда мы идем со всеми нашими проблемами, вопросами и так далее. Поэтому это логично, что мы просим вас взять этот процесс в свои руки. Спасибо. Thank you very much, madam. So, are we taking good note of the amendments and the observations of the member states and secretariat? Okay, so now I would like to invite Mr. Rao to, to reply to, 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 to this question. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, uh, I think the intent is very clear. Uh, the committee would uh, like us to present to you a plan on uh, how we uh, facilitate, uh, enhance, uh, encourage uh, dialogue and communication uh, between the states parties and the advisory bodies. Uh, we can uh, certainly make an attempt. Uh, clearly, uh, in my presentation of the document, I. Uh, may have uh, not been very clear in my communication skills, but uh, never did I say that uh, there is no problem. We said there are several opportunities uh, uh, during the year when this can happen, or if you want special uh, opportunities to be created, we can certainly create them. There are financial and time constraints which have to be taken into account. Every time you want the advisory bodies uh, involved, there is travel and their time cost involved. But taking all that into account, we will certainly put together a plan to show what are the opportunities that come up whenever there are meetings that are uh, already scheduled, when there are visits by the advisory bodies to Paris available, or visits by advisory bodies to different states' parties on missions, etc., that are available. We can document all that into uh, an annual plan and communicate it to the states' parties. That is our understanding of the intent at the moment, but certainly once this decision is adopted, we will have a dialogue with the uh, states' parties also to better understand what the specific needs are, and we can prepare a plan accordingly. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Mr. Rao. So I think uh, now we can uh, maybe ask uh, the rapporteur uh, to uh, read out the amendments as they have been presented. So please, Madam, proceed. Uh, I'm sorry we don't have all of them yet here. Okay. Encourages all parties concerned 
to further enhance and facilitate dialogue, communication and transparency in all processes of the Convention and report to the 38th session of the World Heritage Committee. Requests the World Heritage Center to initiate over the next year now and implement a plan to encourage and enhance both issue-based interactions and site-specific dialogue between the advisory bodies and member states. Requests the World Heritage Center to present the actions taken and progress achieved on measures to improve transparency and accountability in the various processes of, can you please uh, put the screen up? And we have a, a second option, which is under number six now, but it's not number six, it's just a second option. Requests the World Heritage Center to present the actions taken and progress achieved on measures to improve transparency and accountability in the various processes of the convention of the 38th session of the World Heritage Committee. So the members, most of the members agreed upon uh, previous, what I read uh, before. And this is the second option that I just read. So you have to say which one you prefer. For the moment, we have more members that, uh, that agreed about upon one first. Thank you, Madam. Now I invite Jean-Ville, the representative of Algeria, if you would. I would like to just repeat what Algeria vient to propose. So, demand to the Centre du Patrimoine Mondial. demande au Centre du Patrimoine Mondial d'engager au cours de l'année une démarche, une démarche favorisant le dialogue et la communication dans le cadre de la mise en œuvre des mécanismes de la Convention. Merci. Merci beaucoup, madame. Malaysia, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Malaysia's uh, uh, suggestion is not there. What we said was to request the World Heritage Centre to prepare a plan. And then join it up with the first, with the original. Request the World Heritage Centre to prepare a plan to further enhance and facilitate dialogue communication and present it to the 38th meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Um, are our colleagues of Secretariat taking note of these remarks? So just give one minute while they take note of this, please. The rapporteur wants to present some clarifications, please, madam. S'il vous plaît, si on réduit l'écran euh, pour voir la totalité des propositions, 
on n'aura pas, li, on, 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 on verra rien parce que ça, ça sera trop petit. Donc, euh, on va vous proposer, je vais lire lentement toutes les propositions jusqu'à présent et vous allez après décider laquelle vous convient le mieux. Merci. Merci beaucoup, madame. Mais euh, avant de faire ça, j'aimerais bien savoir si le représentant du Japon souhaiterait présenter aussi de, 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 des amendements sur le texte. Monsieur l'ambassadeur, vous avez la parole. Um, on just you know, uh, we'd like to uh, want to keep uh, Malaysian version uh, on the screen, and also Japan is supporting uh, Malaysian version. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. So please, the colleagues of Secretariat, if they could reflect it properly. Thank you. 